praise you Jesus Holy Spirit we thank you Lord we thank you for helping us to understand your word your word is creative power Lord you spoke your word and you created the universe and you have created us in your image in your likeness Lord you never created us to live a defeated life but you have created us just like you as your word says Lord you are meek and you are humble at the same time you used your authority over the storm the wind and every situation help us lord to understand that you have created us just like you to imitate you to learn from you and to live this life being an a witness an ambassador that when when people see they don't see us but they see you in us holy spirit thank you for enlightening our eyes of understanding and helping us to see and understand the unseen world and we thank you holy spirit for confirming every word of yours with signs accompanying in jesus name we pray father amen, amen. praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus so in the morning we saw how the words that we speak has power right yes god's word is creative power god's word is creative, creative power, power. now i'm not saying god's word has creative power which also is right but god's word is creative power the word of god is the source of every other power that we see everything that we see is come from his word how did god create the universe he spoke and he he created right and everything that is created by words respond to words everything that is created by words respond to words hallelujah Amen. that's why jesus said speak to this mountain he spoke to the fig tree he spoke to the sea everything that is created by words they respond to words and god created man in his own image and in his own likeness and god has given man this ability just like god to speak words now when god created the heavens and the earth and everything the star and the moon isn't it amazing to see his creation yes can you see the power in his word he spoke and he created yes is that power void today void today no the the same power is still available because the same word is given to us god spoke and he created right that same power the creative power is still available for you and me the power is not void but we avoid of speaking god's word hallelujah thank you jesus now when 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 god spoke or even when we see jesus in this planet earth when he came as man when he when he opens his mouth and when he spoke words those words had tremendous power yes or no if you see did jesus say big big statements or he spoke deaf spirit come out and the deaf spirit came out he said receive sight how many words he used two words receive sight and the eyes open woman be loosed and the woman was set free rise up and walk and the crippled man began to walk and if you see the words that came from his mouth 
had instant manifestation. Yes or no? Yes. We see his word, when God said, let there be light, instantly there was light. Now, did Jesus tell Peter, whosoever, now Peter was astonished when Jesus spoke to the fig tree and the tree died. In this case, the tree did not die instantly. Jesus spoke to the fig tree, did the tree, the tree did die instantly, but did they see the tree die instantly? No, they saw it next day. That means even Jesus did not see when he spoke instantly, but was he moved by what he saw or he moved by what he spoke? Correct? He believed that the word that he spoke has done the job. Correct? Now, when Peter was so astonished, how is that possible? What did Jesus say? Who so ever. Now, what is Jesus saying? It's not just because I'm the creator that I spoke and the tree obeyed. This ability is given to us also. That's why he said, have faith in God. That Have faith in God also means have to have God kind of faith. To have God kind of faith. Even Paul says that. You know what Paul says? He said in, in Galatians 2.20. Can somebody read Galatians chapter 2 verse number 20? Okay. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of. Is he saying faith in or faith of? Faith of, faith of the son of God. So Paul is saying, I have the same faith that Christ operated. Now when Jesus was in this planet earth, did he speak to the blind eyes? Yes. Did he speak to the deaf spirit? Yes. Did he speak to the crippled man? Yes. Did the crippled man walk? Yes. Did the deaf ear open? Yes. Did the blind eyes open? Yes. yes. Did he operate by faith? Yes. That same faith is given to you and me. It's a gift. Faith is a free gift that is given to every one of us who believes. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This faith is in the word itself. Faith is the ability to see the unseen. Faith is the ability to see, hear and understand things that cannot be seen, heard or understood with our natural ability. Now, just like how we have our natural human sense, we also have our faith sense. Can we see with our physical eyes? Yes. Did anyone teach you how to see? No. Did mama teach you how to see? No. Did mama teach you how to hear? No. No. It's an ability. It's actually a gift. Yes or no? Yes. Did you earn it? No. No, it's a gift. God gave us this ability to see, to hear, to smell and to touch. Just like how... Our physical human senses is the ability to see, hear and understand physical things. We have this spiritual sense called the faith sense. And this faith sense is the ability to see, hear and understand the unseen. You know why we struggle? The reason why we struggle is we use our natural senses to see the spiritual things, the unseen. It's like trying to use my eyes to hear. Is the eyes designed to hear? No. In the same way, my natural senses, is it designed to see, hear and understand the unseen, the seen? My natural senses is designed to see the seen, but not the unseen. That's why the Bible says, for a natural man, spiritual things are foolishness. For natural man, spiritual things are foolishness. Why? Because the natural man will say, if I can't see, if I can't smell, if I can't touch, it is not there. 
Only if I can see and touch and see, I can feel it, only then I will believe it. But spiritual things has no physical evidence. But the good news is, when God created man, God created man with the ability to see, hear and understand the unseen. That's why now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Just like how the seen world is real, the unseen world is also real. In fact, it's more real. It's more real. Because the seen world has come from the unseen world. And the unseen world is the parent and the seen is the child. And the scene has come from the unseen. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> but Jesus every time makes a statement. You have eyes, you can't see. You have ears, can't you hear, nor you understand. Correct? Now, is he speaking about them being deaf and blind? He is not speaking about their natural senses. He is speaking about their spiritual senses. It's just like how we have our natural senses, our eyes, our ears to see and hear and understand, we also have our, our spiritual senses to see, hear and understand spiritual things. But most of us, I don't want to use this word, but that makes us understand better. Most of us are spiritually retarded or spiritually handicapped. Have you heard the word retarded? Mentally retarded. A person who has all the senses but inability to use the senses. Correct? In the same way, we may be physically fit. Our physical senses are perfect. But there is something called spiritual retardation or spiritual handicap. That means I have spiritual eyes but I couldn't see the unseen world. I have spiritual ears but I couldn't hear nor I could understand. That's why Jesus said you have eyes can't you see, you have ears can't you hear nor can you understand. Now what is the solution if I see in my life I, I, I'm spiritually retarded or spiritually handicapped. What is the solution for that? <coughs> so there's a very, very simple solution that the word of God has given us in Romans 10 verse number 17. Faith comes. How faith comes? Right here. Hearing right here. and hearing by the word of God means the more I begin to hear the word, that's when my spiritual senses begins to activate. And what faith is that? That faith is the same faith that Jesus operated in. And I can also walk in that same faith just like Jesus. Faith, faith is what? Faith is the ability to see the unseen. And this ability begins to activate the more I begin to hear the word. Now, he did, that scripture does not say faith comes by hearing alone. The scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing. It's not just hearing from these ears, outside ears. There is another hearing. That hearing comes from within. Your, from, from your inside ear. If I give a negative example, we'll understand. If you went to the doctor and the doctor said you have XYZ sickness. How many times you heard from this outside ear? Once. But after you left the clinic, how many times is that word going to speak to you? How many times will I go on Google and find sometimes we know more about the sickness than the doctor. Nowadays we go to the hospital to tell the doctor the symptoms plus the diagnosis. Yes. Now what are we doing? We, we did not just hear it once but we keep on hearing it Again and again. 
you know uh, one of one of the thing that i'm seeing now which is dangerous when we were smaller my parents time did they have anything about they did they know anything about uh, psychological problem learning disability autism all these things no no right no. when the, when the child is not studying not studying that's it correct now for everything they label i see uh, when i i did psychology when i was when i started doing my uh, degree and then i did my masters when i started going to college everyone in my class would be labeled everybody had a label you are mild ocd you are mild paranoid you are schizophrenic you are this you are that you know everybody would they would call even they call, call me also you are dyslexic everybody had a label they don't call us by names they would call us with because first of all we have to do our own test right so we see our own score and everybody knows what is our score what is iq and even statistics says the country well developed country where there is all development of psychology and all these resources the recovery of mental sickness is less but the developing country where there is no psychology the recovery is fast you know why because when they don't know they don't label when you don't label you don't speak death yes. but when you begin to label you yourself start you know i start seeing people calling ah, i have bipolar i have this i have i am ocd i am this who named you who baptized you these have gone not just diabetic and blood pressure now there are so many psychological labels coming even if we don't have what are we doing we are inventing these sicknesses not even knowing that life and death is in the power of our tongue now what are, what is happening is we are becoming more and more sensitive about the problem we are becoming more and more sensitive about the sickness instead of becoming more and more sensitive of healing now now faith comes by hearing and hearing right we are consistently hearing and we are educating ourselves of sicknesses sicknesses are been invented every day and new new names are coming right from childhood to old age you know if a person is elder then they call this person as dementia this person alzheimers yes or no which we never heard before why because we are becoming so hardened spiritually handicapped and physically we are becoming very very sensed and when you see a big mountain okay and jesus said whosoever shall say to this mount when you look at the mountain and when you begin to stare at a mountain i wonder lord how can this mountain move by my word really when i when when i begin to study and when i begin when i travel when i begin to see these hills and i was thinking how can i just speak to this mountain and move this mountain that's when the lord said the more you keep focusing on the mountain the mountain you become more sensitive to the mountain and the mountain becomes for you more real than the word of god hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah. now many any time when it comes to confession okay i have seen people who confess and the body of christ said me have no power me and the body of christ said me have no power and the body of christ said no 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 by the ones of this i mean by the ones of this by now when i see jesus he said receive sight and the person instantly receives sight we are confessing 1000 times 2000 times and we are not seeing any power that means somewhere something is wrong if jesus could see instant result that means i can also see now it not necessary every time he saw but he was so confident he did he stand there and he kept on speaking to that fig tree until he saw it die but can we also come to a place where where we speak we can also see result yes because jesus said who so ever but we have to understand how this works 
one of the reason why we don't see result let me give why we don't see result when we speak i speak the word i am healed by the wounds of jesus or 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 i am the body of christ or any scripture spirit of the lord is upon me my god himself has anointed me i have the mind of christ i might be speaking but i am not seeing the power every day i take the bad book and i confess but i am not seeing tremendous change of power or manifestation i'll give you one of the reason why do you want to know <coughs> okay when the word is spoken when god spoke he did not speak empty words he spoke faith filled words he spoke faith filled words when jesus spoke he did not just speak that's why jesus said every unproductive word words which has no production or no no result will be judged did he say that that means i can speak words that is productive and i can speak words that does not bring any production it's not just speaking words it is learning to speak faith filled words if i teach you that words have power but if i don't teach you how to speak words that releases god's power then you will not see god's power being released jesus did not just throw words he spoke faith filled words thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus, praise you, jesus. the reason is many times we think like this if i keep confessing i am healed by the wounds of jesus then i will be healed yes or no if i keep on saying by the wounds of jesus i am already healed then god will heal me if you speak such word those words won't bring result because you are thinking god is going to answer my prayer based on my confession if only you know when when you do the white book confession many times i see people confessing it without even knowing what they are speaking because it has been ingrained okay i have to say if i say this prayer then god will see and he'll be pleased but when i see jesus jesus is not saying four pages and five pages he only speaks two words and three words and he sees result that's why it's not about how many times i'm saying it's about how much effect comes when i speak hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus first of all i have to understand words are containers words are containers words are containers that contains substance now just like how you see this water bottle is it a container yes. yes does this container has substance called water in it yes. yeah yes in the same way words are containers, containers that contains substance if the substance is not there then the bottle is empty then our words are empty and that word doesn't bring any result hallelujah thank you jesus words are containers that contains substance words are transporters that transport substance words are transporters that transport substance first of all you have to understand it is not when i speak god is going to do things no everything that you and i need is already done for example healing is done deliverance is done god has already blessed us he has healed us he has redeemed us correct it's finished on the cross it is already in the unseen the wrong understanding is when i speak then god will heal me is a wrong understanding god has already healed me 
and the healing is already available. When God spoke, what did God do? God transported the substance from the unseen into the seen. From the unseen into the seen. Just like how this container transports substance from the unseen into the seen, in the same way our words connects us to the spiritual world and it brings the substance which is already there in the unseen into the sea. One of the reason, first reason we saw, the reason why we don't see our words bringing result is because we, we don't speak faith filled words. words. And the other one is we speak words thinking if I speak then God will answer. Now another reason is when we speak words, the reason why our words are not faith-filled words or the reason why our words has no impact is because the words that we speak, we don't believe. The words that we speak, we don't believe. You know why? Because we are trained to speak words that we don't believe. For example, I'll give an example. Do we use words like, my head is bursting? I am dying. Yes. I am sick of this. Yes. yes? Do we use words like um, we call names, call somebody dog or monkey or yes? yes? Now when we say that, will the person turn into monkey? Yes. Or when we when we say something, okay, I am dying, that the person die? Maybe. Eventually. Now, 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 listen to this. Thank God Jesus said you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. There are many words that we speak which we don't really mean it. There are many words that we speak that we really... Now, for example, if you call a person monkey and if you believe... You don't believe it, you just call, correct? But if you believe that your words have power, will you call no. Will you call your child a kid? No. You call them children, not kid. Correct? Now, because when you understand that your words have power, praise God, I remember a testimony. There was this boy who used to play and uh, whenever the ball would fall in the gutter, he would love to enter into the gutter and put his hand inside. And he would love gutter he loved to put his hand in the dirt and he would enjoy you know why because his father used to call him pig and he started to receive that word and he he the and when he began to receive he began to pick up the character of a now did that word have power yes. impact now did the father mean him to be a pig no. no, but did he accept that word? Yes. yes. So words have power? Yes. yes. But many times when we speak words which we don't believe, we are actually making a heart hardened or we are making a heart insensitive. We are training a heart not to believe what we speak. Now, sometimes I can say, I just, I was joking here. I did not mean it. Correct? Nice. Do we say that? I did not mean it. I was only joking. Just because I said, will it happen? Now, what are you training your heart? You're training your heart. Whatever I say will not happen. I'm training my heart that not my, all my words I have no power. So, my heart is becoming what? Insensitive. Now when I go and lay hand on the blind eyes, my heart is trained not to believe what I speak. Because my heart believes that when I speak with the same sight, the, the, the eyes won't come because the, eye, the person won't receive eyesight. Because I have trained my heart not to believe the words I speak. There are so many reasons why the words that we speak has no result. It's not like one day you come and you confess. It is becoming sensitive to the word every day, every moment, every second. 
because what I focus is what my heart becomes sensitive and what I neglect is what my heart becomes harder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I began also, it was the same. When I started hearing the word of God, I would speak the problem very casually. It would come very, very naturally because I'm so trained to speak the problem, speak my sickness, speak my weakness. It has become a habit. It has become a lifestyle. But then when I begin to hear the word of God, every time in the beginning, I had to forcefully make the correction that I, I, I shouldn't speak this word until it became a habit. Until it became a lifestyle. If you see a dog, okay, there is a dog that is tamed and there is a dog which is not tamed. Can you see the difference? You, call, you tell an untamed dog, sit, will it sit? Run, it will run. Jump, it will jump. No. You tell a tamed dog, sit. Instantly it sits, it doesn't even think. Correct? Now, did it happen one day or the dog was trained again and again? I have seen dog tra being trained. Literally, I sometimes feel like it is tortured. Say it, say it, say it hundred times and then you give reward. Yeah? And, and then it registers in the mind the word said, it sits. Wherever it is. Correct? In the same way, we are being trained, our tongue and our mind is being tamed to speak the problem. We instantly speak what we see or we instantly speak the negative. If you check our life from morning till night, which words comes out of our mouth more? Which words comes out? Good words or the problem more? Scripture more? Or the negative thing more? Because we are trained to speak the problem. The world teaches us to speak the problem because you open the news, you open the newspaper, you open the media, you go anywhere, what is always being spoken. So we are sensitive to the seen or the, the unseen. We are sensitive to the seen. That's why our spiritual senses are very, very dull. That's why we constantly open our mouth and speak what we see. But when we come into the word of God, we have to train our senses to speak the word of God until it becomes a habit. And every time you open your mouth and speak something, remember that word has power. Every time you open your mouth and speak, tell yourself what I spoke has life. It will come to pass. If you begin to teach yourself every day consistently, the moment something wrong comes out, you say, no, I cancel it. I don't agree it because you know your words have power. Now, when you begin to become sensitive, that's how you become sensitive that my words have power. You will be very, very alert and very, very careful what is going to come out of your mouth. Now when you go and lay hand on the blind eyes, your heart is already sensitive. You know what you speak has power. Is it very, very important for us to be very careful of the words that we speak? If we even speak one word thinking it is only a joke, we are hardening our now when we speak faith-filled words of word of God, that is not filled with faith, that is filled with unbelief. Why? Because we have trained to speak words that produces no result. Okay, now let's write and then continue. Okay, God's word is creative power. God's word is creative power. God's word is creative power. Power. That creative power, that creative power is produced by the heart. That creative power is produced by the heart, formed by the tongue. God's word is creative power. That creative power is produced by the heart, not tongue, produced by the heart, formed by the tongue and released and released 
out of the mouth in word form. God's word is creative power. That creative power is produced by the heart, formed by the tongue and released out of the mouth in word form. Okay. Many times the word of God, the word that we speak is released from a mouth which is not produced in a heart. For example, you open the white book or you open the scriptures and you start confessing one big page or two, three pages. You run in an express train. It comes out of your mouth, but it's not in your heart. The word of God has to be first produced in my heart. Then it has to be formed in my mouth, in my tongue. And then it has to be released from my mouth. That's how faith-filled words, faith-filled words are released. And that faith-filled words is the creative power that creates. What is the first line you wrote? God's word is creative power. Then the next one, that is produced by the heart. Okay, okay. For that, the word has to be conceived in my heart. The word has to be conceived in my heart. For consumption, there is a seed required. Yes or no? A mother cannot be pregnant without the seed. The seed of the mother and the seed of the father is how the consumption takes place. In the same way, words are not just to be spoken. It has to be faith-filled words. It is, it is words that has to be released. That's why when Jesus spoke, he did not speak one word hundred times. He just spoke once and he saw a result. If he just spoke and he saw a result, that means you and I can also speak and see result. For that, the key is first, consumption is very, very important. And without a seed, there is no consumption. The first step of confession is, con uh, the first step of uh, consumption is actually confession. The first step of consumption uh, before confession, hearing. Hearing is first, okay? First faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And there are three gates, gateways to a heart. What is that? My eyes, my ears and my mouth. That's how the seed enters. What I see, what I hear and what I speak. Just like how the seed has to remain in the soil, the word of God has to remain in our heart. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Until and unless the seed doesn't remain, the seed cannot produce life. That's why the word of God is, is compared to seed. If you see a seed, it is very insignificant, right? Comparing to the tree. Comparing to the harvest. It looks small. It Sometimes it looks tiny also. But that seed has the potential to multiply. Correct? The farmer has to learn how to unlock the seed. This creative power is in God's word. That's why I said God's word is not void of power. But we have not understood how to release this power. And this power is given to every one of us. Because the word of God is given to every one of us. And all that we have to do is to take that word and allow that word to remain in our heart. God has never, when God did not give the harvest, God never gives us the harvest. He gave us the seed. God did not give Abraham a child. He gave a seed. In the spiritual, I'm saying. He gave the promise. In the same way, everything that we need is already given to us, but it is being given to us in the form of a seed. And that seed has to be conceived in a heart. That's why the word of God is produced in a heart. 
So when we begin to hear the word, that word enters into our heart. Now, when when you hear a negative news, when the doctor said so and so sickness, you hear it once. Or you hear it once and then you start pondering on it. You start imagining on it. You start googling on it. You start calling people and you start speaking about it. Now what are you doing? Now you receive the seed and you begin to water the seed. You know the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verse number 19. He spoke 17th verse right? Did he? You spoke? No. Did you speak about Abraham? I heard something. Uh, but not the 17th verse. Okay. If you see in the 19th verse, it says, Abraham was not weak in faith because he did not consider his own body, which was as good as dead, and nor he considered Sarah's womb, which was dead. The reason why Abraham was not weak in faith because he did not consider his body which was dead nor did he consider Sarah's womb which was dead. The meaning of the word consider means to think, to ponder, to meditate, to imagine is consider. Now, when the doctor said you have X, Y, Z sickness, what do we ponder on? What do we research on? Yeah. We, we might be ordinary people, but we will be knowing all the medical terms. Correct? Of that sickness, what do doctor diagnosed. Why? Because now I am researching on that sickness. Now I am going and studying on that sickness. Now, you know, during COVID time, they used to put that lungs picture. Yeah. yeah, of uh, on the TV they show the how they inf they had a lot of uh, graphic uh, uh, videos and how the virus would pass, uh, how it would spread from one person to another person. They made a lot of videos. Yes or no? How it is affecting the lungs? Yes, yes. How many of you never went outside? You're inside the house. You locked up everything. Just by seeing the TV, you felt like breathlessness. Feeling difficult to breathe. Fear. Did it happen? Yes. <laughs> now, the reason is you have become sensitive to it. Now, have you really seen how your lungs look? No. Many of them, no. Until the result came positive, they had no symptoms. The moment positive result came, all the symptoms came. Now, have you seen your lungs with your eyes? No. No. But what are you imagining? I have, this many times, I see people would describe inside my stomach, I, everything is gone, all wound, all ulcers, uh, so many stones. They could actually imagine big, big stones. Yes or no? Yes. There are so many blocks in my heart. You actually begin to see a heart. I have so many blocks. I have so many stones. Uh, my All my inside is all gone. My lungs are in this condition. My heart is in this condition. Uh, what are we imagining? Negative Now, you are not even a doctor. You have not even seen your organ. You don't even know how your organ looks. But uh, have you already created an imagination? Yes or no? Yes. Now, you have an imagination, my lung is malfunctioning. My, my kidney is malfunctioning. Uh, there is a big tumor and you, you're already imagining and you're already seeing that this organ is completely dead or completely gone or you're seeing it rotten. Okay? And then you're opening your mouth and saying, I'm healed by the wounds of Jesus. What is conceived in your heart? Yeah. That imagination, whenever there is consumption, there is an imagination. Remember that. Whenever there is consumption, there is imagination. Means you are seeing something which you can't see. In this case, you are seeing your lungs dead. Or you are seeing your pancreas dead. Or you are seeing that big lump. Or you are seeing the stones. Sometimes the scan report helps you to see much better. Even though the scan report is not very clear. Yes or no? Yes. Now what is conceived in your heart? Which seed is conceived? You're healed? 
or this organ is gone. What am I imagining? What am I seeing? I am saying I am healed by the wounds of Jesus. The word is saying I am healed by the wounds of Jesus. But what am I seeing? How am I seeing? I am seeing according to doctor's report. Because that doctor's report is showing me the fact. And the fact is for me more real than my healing. Now I can open my mouth and say I am healed by the wounds of Jesus. But that word has no power. Because that is an empty word. Because what I see in my heart and what I speak out of my mouth doesn't match. And I am asking question. I am confessing I am healed by the wounds of Jesus. Why nothing is happening? Now are you understanding? Are you getting it? Yes. Because first the word of God has to be conceived in my heart. Now Abraham did not see himself. My body is dead. I can, there is no more ability to reproduce. Sarah's womb is dead. She has no more ability to reproduce. He did not consider that. He did not imagine that. Consider means he did not imagine it. He did not picture that. He did not meditate that he did not see that he did not he did not ponder on that but what he did what did he see he got conceived with that promise that i am made the father of many nations the bible says as it was written abraham was made the father of many nation in the presence of god abraham believed in the presence of God, Abraham believed. You know, logically, can he believe to be father of one son? In that old age. But he was believing that he is father of many nations. And he did not believe because he could see or we could feel. What about us? I have to see, I have to feel. Then I will say, praise the Lord, Jesus healed me. But Abraham... In fact, that promise today is being fulfilled. You and I are descendants of Abraham because of Jesus. Correct? Because when we believe in Christ, we are the descendants of Abraham by faith. And that promise is being fulfilled today. That his generation is countless. But on that day, even before he could ever see in his lifetime, he believed that promise. In the presence of God. What gave him the ability to, to believe something that he never saw in his own lifetime? Because he did not consider his own body. Again, let me come back to the COVID example. When we constantly kept on seeing the news and the media and people sending us in WhatsApp. What happened? Many people died not because of COVID. Many people died because of fear. Those words that we kept on Seeing and hearing, we became very sensitive. But the word of God, we have become very insensitive. Now I'm opening my mouth and speaking. I'm healed. But I'm imagining the report. I'm still seeing that organ as dead because I can feel the pain. Sometimes you might say, uh, it's not about the report, uh, imag uh, the image in the report. But I could feel it, no? I could feel the pain. I could see the swelling. I could see the symptom. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't have right. So you will not know. If you are in my condition, then you will understand what I'm going through. That's why the first step is consumption in my heart. When I say consumption in my heart means me beginning to see what I cannot see with my physical eyes. That will not happen in one day or one moment or one night. <laughs> Remember, this is the gateway. What I see, what I hear, what I speak is the gateway. Why is that one person goes and sees deaf ears opening, the other person is always with sickness and praying and praying. You know why? Because the person who is seeing deaf ears opening or blind eyes opening or sick getting healed is every day seeing and hearing and speaking the unseen. If you ask me, how did you start, uh, people say that, oh, you have healing gift, you have healing ministry, you're called to do that. Yes or no? They think that some people are 
anointed or some people are called or they are gifted. Actually, Jesus did not say that. Did he say those who are gifted will do the same works I do and greater works than me? Thank God Jesus did not say that. If anybody else comes and says you have to be gifted, I say then you are telling Jesus is a liar. Because Jesus did not say that. Jesus very, very clearly said those who believe in me will do the same works and even greater works than these because I go to my father. If Jesus said that anyone who believes will has the same ability to do what he did, then I am qualified not because of anything else, because Jesus said that. That means I can do exactly what Jesus did. Because the same power and the same ability is given. But why is that one believer is seeing result? And when the one believer is seeing result, everybody labels, oh, that preacher is very powerful. That preacher is uh, gifted. No, the preacher did something. And the preacher did something consistently. You know what is the key? Consistency is the key for breakthrough. What is the key? Consistency is the key for breakthrough. What is the difference between a normal person and a champion? The difference is what a normal person does occasionally, a champion does every day. That's the difference. I took the sayings from the Bible, you are taking the saying from the world. Praise God. Because Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you shall know the truth. Many times we take it out of context and we say, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The knowing of the truth comes only when I continue in the word. You know why? Because the seed has to continuously remain in the soil. You know, I remember when I was in school, um, teacher said, you know, in the science book, you have this diagram, seed. Uh, the seed, and then you see sprout. the root, the, first the root coming, correct? Mm -hmm. And then a sprout coming, and then the leaves coming, and then a big plant, correct? You have that? Yes. You all also have? Yes. Praise God. Now, uh, also the teacher said, go home and plant the seed. Only in my school? No. no. Yes. Now, yes. now when, when the teacher said, I remember I came home and I put that seed, you know, in that coconut shell and near the window and I waited for at least two hours. <laughs> Nothing came. Then I started to dig and I took the seed expecting some roots would have come. Nothing came. I kept inside. Again, I waited for another one hour. Then again, I digged. Again, I saw the seed. Nothing came. Now I'm wondering what happened in the science book is not happening here. Again, I kept the seed back. Then my mother saw me digging and digging every time. She said, if you keep on digging, nothing will happen. <laughs> That's what we are doing in our Christian life. We keep on digging and digging. Yes. Nothing is happening. Yes. My mother said, you need patience. It doesn't happen just like that. But it will surely work if you allow it to remain in the soil. In the same way, if you allow the word to remain in the heart consistently, that word will 100% bring result. But we are not like that, no? We are impatient. We want everything instant like Maggi noodles. I have to speak and I have to see. If I don't see, then I begin to dig and I say, it's not working and I throw it. That's when the consumption has become an abortion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why this, the word has to be conceived in a heart. It has to be produced in a heart. The consumption has to take. For the consumption, the seed has to remain. If it doesn't remain, then it cannot be released with the mouth. Very easy to say, no, life and death is the power of my tongue. Finish. You have to speak life, don't speak death. But when you go deeper is when you understand. That word has to remain. If I give a negative example, you will understand. Some 20 years ago, mother-in-law said something. Or daughter-in-law said something. Or somebody said something. Negative. Do you remember? How is that? 
what happened okay last week what breakfast you had do you remember you can't remember what happened last week but you can remember 20 years ago how huh? so because we keep on think pondering thinking now maybe yesterday somebody said something very good you don't remember today very good word they spoke about you they appreciated you maybe last week you don't remember the same person when somebody spoke appreciation i don't remember but somebody spoke bad about me insulted me 20 years ago i still remember i can even tell you the color i was wearing i can even tell you the color she was wearing i even tell you the expression of the person i can even tell you exactly word to word with the expression i can act and show after 20 years that is also seed conception <coughs> when i say word of god conception is difficult to understand this is very practical to understand correct why why is that when it comes to scripture i say sister you know what i have problem in remembering scripture so we keep going on and on yeah <coughs> yeah and now now when they come with memory problem no i have memory problem i can't understand how is that what happened what happened in 1952 i can remember you know why because when you receive the seed and when you keep on pondering when you keep on rehearsing have you seen a cow chewing yes. yeah? yeah now in that whole day maybe the 20 year story so many good things would have happened on the same day do you remember it today no but that incident somebody abused you or insulted you do you remember yes, yes. you know why because that incident happened only once outside but it did not happen once inside yes or no it happened once but i kept on chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing that's when that seed began to remain that's when the conception took place that's when the imagination has become very strong i could even see and tell you exactly where how but now we are born again now we are born again we have to renew our mind yeah praise god thank you jesus okay now when we consider that's why the word consider the word consider means what to imagine to think to ponder to meditate now that incident that happened 2000 sorry not 2000 20 years back okay what am i doing i am chewing i am meditating i am imagining i am rehearsing you know our uh, sleep is such a gift from god when you sleep there is a very uh, beautiful process happening some people get tormented in sleep they get bad dreams they get beaten up they get they get attacked in sleep you know why because of the seeds that you plant in the daytime it affects you in the night if i see in the bible many of them received messages supernatural messages god spoke to them gave them direction in the sleep why because they were planting good seeds in the data that connected them to god's sleep because even when i am sleeping god is still working now when we are sleeping all those things which we consider important our brain is processed to water it and strengthen it that's why when you get up in the morning many people get up with headache why you might be sleeping but there is a demonic war going on because of that seed of hatred that was planted but if i am going to what did abraham do he did not consider his body which was dead nor sarah's womb but he was considering he was imagining he was pondering he was thinking he was researching he was studying on what god promised i am made the father of many nations that's why when he was sleeping also the spirit of god was was working and 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 even when was when he was sleeping the brain the physical body also is is programmed to strengthen that memory 
That's why you don't remember everything. When you go out, you see 50 people's face. Do you remember all the face? No. But one person abused you, you remember? Yes. Because when you go to sleep, all those data which is you consider not important, your brain deletes it. And what you consider important, your brain strengthens it. That's why you still remember what happened 20 years ago. Because your, every time you sleep, that information is strengthened. That's exactly how it is with sickness. The more I keep on feeding myself with not only my sickness, in general, if I am going to feed with all the information of the world, of all the problem, my heart becomes very, very sensitive. Now when I open my mouth and speak, the consumption in my heart is of the problem, but the words I speak is God's word. That's why there is no result. Renew your mind. Yes, yes. You want me to come to renew your mind? Wait. I'll go step by step. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, now. The word which is conceived in our heart. And this word has to remain in our heart. When this word, you know what, what I consistently allow, what I see, what I hear, what I speak, consistently is going to affect my heart and this word that I allow is going to produce that kind of imagination when it comes to healing okay for a long time I used to think that these healings are not real I have never seen any kind of healing happening for the first time I met uh, Papa Johnson in one uh, a disabled uh, physically challenged home and I saw with my eyes this girl had a crooked lips and her lips became straight and I saw another person who was born deaf his deaf ears open now when I saw that he was preaching on that day Mark 16 verse 17 and he said these signs shall follow those who believe in my name they shall cast out demon they shall speak in new tongues. When they lay hand on the sick, the sick shall recover. Now when I saw the whole thing, did I only see or there were many of them attending the retreat? Many. Now when I saw that with my eyes, and when he was preaching, <coughs> these signs shall follow those who believe. I started asking, Lord, that means your word says these signs will follow those who believe it's not just this preacher if he believes and he sees the result that means I can also see the same the moment I said that no he, he pointed his finger to me and he said you come as if yeah who asked ah, okay <laughs> come now the moment he said you come I was like that was so instant <laughs> That was really instant, right? Because I just thought in my heart, if he can do, then I can do. Because that's what he was preaching. That's what the scripture says. These signs will follow those who And there is a person who had tumor, but not outside, inside. But she had pain also. And he called her and he told me to lay hand. And I honestly did not know what to speak. I just repeated whatever he said. He, he said, in the name of Jesus, I speak to you, you to tumor. Be uprooted from the root and be cast out of the sea. And I just repeated him. Before I would finish what I spoke, I couldn't feel her hand anymore. I opened my eyes. She was down on the floor. And after a few minutes, she got up and she said, I have no more pain. There is no pain at all. I feel completely free. Praise God. But that is not the end. Did that seed got conceived in my heart? Yes. Was that seed only conceived in my heart or everybody in the hall? Correct? Yes. This happened in 2007. Many people, it was only, not only that retreat, after that there were many places. There were school retreats, college retreats and I went everywhere and I saw healing. But that was something that touched me. The first time I saw something like that. <laughs> now, everybody saw it. And... The seed entered into all our hearts. Even my own sister was there. When it comes to seed, there are two kinds of seed. 
One is a good seed and the other one bad seed that produces thorns, bushes, <coughs> weeds, thistles. Correct? Yes? Yes or no? Yes. Now when you see a place and you see all thorns and bushes and weeds, what does it mean? Nobody took any time to plant water, manure, clean, uproot. Yes or no? Yes. It is just left unattended. Correct? When a place is left unattended, will it be, will the bushes, will the thorns grow fast? In a high speed, I come from a place where we have thorny bushes everywhere. And especially around the house, we have to cons constantly keep on um, cleaning. If we stop once, then the thorny bushes would grow very fast. They don't only grow, they suck all the nutrition that any other plant, plant, any other fruit or any other tree planted will not yield anything because all is sucked by these thorny bushes. Now, when it comes to thorny bush, is there any, any labor required? Any hard work required? Any, any physical work required? No. It grows very fast. It spreads very fast. Yes or no? When it comes to fruits and vegetables, will it fast very it grow very fast, spread very fast? Whenever you see a beautiful garden with beautiful flowers and fruits and vegetables, what does that mean? When you see thorns and bushes means it is unattended. When you see a, gra a, a garden with fruits and vegetables means somebody is working behind it. Yes or no? Yes. It, did not, it did not spread. It was planted, it was watered and it is not just planted and left. It has to be con continuously pruned. The weeds has to be removed. Yes or no? A gardener cannot say, okay, I planted this seed, my job is done. Can he? No. No. There is labor required. Yes, yes or no? Yes. Now, in the same way, when it comes to God's word, <laughs> when it comes to fear, worry, anxiety, it's like what? Weeds, thorns and thistles. When you leave your life unattended, fear and anxiety and the cares of the world and all those things will control your life. They grow fast. Those seeds, how those seeds enter? Same. Through my eyes, what I see, what I hear and what I speak. Those seeds, when I leave, just like how you see a place which is unattended, you know, nobody has to tell you when you see the thorns and bushes growing, it means nobody has taken any attention. Nobody has taken care of it. It is left unattended, correct? In the same way, if I see fear and worry and anxiety in my life, that means I have just allowed my heart and I've been allowing all these things what I see here and speak to control my life. Yes or no? Yes. But when you see a person producing the fruit of the Spirit, faith, joy, peace, love, you see God kind of supernatural result in a person's life, that means just like how when I see a garden, the garden, a gardener cannot say, I just planted 10 years ago and my job is done. No, the gardener even can't leave for one month and go. You know that? Yes. If he leaves for one month, it will go back to square one. The, the condition of the, the garden will become the same. It will be turned into a jungle. Yes or no? The gardener has to consistently water, consistently prune, consistently remove the weed. That's how our heart is also. When it comes to God's word, it's not just I planted one because on that day, that seed was not only planted in my heart. Everybody received the same word. That's why Jesus said the seed was the same, but the heart that received was not the same. Some fell on the pathway, some fell on the thorn, uh, stony ground, some on the thorns and some on the good soil. If, if I want to see result, my words bringing Result, just like how God spoke. The first is the word has to be conceived in my heart. The word has to be produced in my heart. The consumption has to take place. But it cannot be just conceived and then forgotten. The farmer cannot just plant the seed and forget it and leave it and go. There are many people who receive the seed that I received, Mark 16, 17. But that Mark 16, 17 which I received, 
I didn't want to leave it. When I saw with my eyes, because that Mark 16, 17 was not preached, 17, 18, 19, was not just preached, it was preached with demonstration. He preached it and he demonstrated and he showed me a deaf ear opening. He showed how Mark 16, 17, 18 worked. I received that seed on that day. But did I see the harvest on that day? I did see, but that was not my harvest, that was his harvest. I did see a person getting healed, but I was following the instruction given. When I went back to my college, to my hostel, I started watering that seed. I started imagining. I started pondering. I started thinking. I started researching. I started studying. On Mark 16, 17, 18, 19. These signs shall follow those who believe. That's when the consumption began in my heart. And I began to see, Jesus, you said these signs will follow those who believe. That means I am a believer wherever I go, just like how the shadow fall, follows me when I walk in the sunlight. In the same way, wherever I go, as long as I walk in your word and this light that God, God's word in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God and that word is the light of God. And when I begin to walk in this word, and when this word is in my heart, and when I walk in this light, just like how shadow follows a person walking in the light, when I walk in this word, the, the, the signs and miracles will follow me like a shadow wherever I go. And I begin to ponder. When I lay hand on the sick, the sick shall recover. I did not hear... Uh, uh, you know, one day sermon. I only took one part of the sermon. Maybe in that day, there were so many things he was preaching. But I was not focusing on everything. I focused on that one thing. I was focusing on going depth. It happened so many years ago, 15 years ago. And today also, it's so fresh for me. Why? Because it, that, that consumption took place. And I began to water it. And I began to imagine it. I began to ponder it. I began to think about it. And I began to see that the same power is in me. The same Christ is in me. Because I can do the same things what Jesus did. And these signs will follow those who believe. After three days or four days, I got, uh, you know, uh, information in my hostel. One of my um, friend, she's not even a Christian, that she's very sick. She's on the bed and her parents are coming to take her home. We were in hostel at that time. The moment I heard that news, I tell you, I also heard the voice of God. Now, I, I did not hear an audible voice of God telling Jocelyn, no. It's, it's, it's a kind of thought Thoughts. that is coming very strong. And I know that's God speaking to me. And, that, and, and I begin to hear his voice. When I say voice, I, I, I recognize his voice that I have to go and lay hand because that scripture doesn't even say lay a hand on the sick and pray it says when the believer lay hand on the sick that's all not even pray when the believer lay hand on the sick the sick shall recover now was i did i hear it once was i only hearing or everybody in that auditorium were hearing now i'm not saying none of them practiced they would have i don't know but not everybody practiced it if I would have gone and asked some of them, they will say, which man, which retreat, I don't remember. Because I'm talking something of some 15 years ago. My sister was there at that time. She was not touched. Even though she was sitting there, she was not touched. If I would ask her, I don't even know that he spoke about Mark 16, she might say. But now she is. Praise God. When I heard that news, I still remember. I, I already activated the gift of tongues and I started praying in tongues. Let me tell you, the Bible says we have a helper. We have a helper. helper. You know why? Because the thoughts were saying on that day, Brother Johnson was there. So when you said it happened because he was there. Because if it would have not happened, he's still there to deal it. Correct? Does it happen? When the preacher calls you and the preacher tells you to repeat and when you are repeating what the preacher tells, you are confident because the preacher knows to handle it. Yes or no? Yes. 
Now the thoughts are coming. On that day, he called me and I repeated whatever he said and the person got healed. But today the preacher is not there. Thank God he was not there. You know why? Otherwise, I would have depended on him, not on the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can clap, but will you also practice? Yes. Ah, then clap. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now, I remember, now, I can remember it so well. I can tell you my room, the path I was walking, that room where that girl was. Why? Because it, it, it had a, cons it, it, it become a consumption in my heart. It happened 15 years ago, but it is so fresh in my heart. That means you no need to only take those bad incidents and remember. When you come to God, now God is teaching you because weeds will automatically grow. Those bad things, you no need even to labor. It will by itself get stuck in your heart. Correct? You will keep on pondering and thinking. But when it comes to word of God, you have to deliberately, purposefully make the choice. And I began to walk to that hostel. And I'm saying, Lord, I don't feel anything. The preacher is not here. I'm only going because I have never done any healing before. But what gave me the confidence? You know, remember one thing. What you When you ponder... Again and again and again, that's when you begin to hear the voice. There is a difference between a person studying the word, reading the word, and the person hearing the voice from the word. There is a difference. When you hear the word, voice from the word, that voice is what gives you confidence to go and do what the word says. Now what gave Peter the confidence to step out of the boat? Because he did not just hear the word, he heard the voice. Now I heard the word when, the, when he was preaching, when the preacher was preaching. These signs shall follow those who believe. When the believer lay hand on the sick, the sick shall recover. I heard the word. But on that day, I did not just hear the word. I heard the voice coming from the word that gave me confidence to step out. The, the word I received and the voice I received did not happen instantly. When I kept on pondering again and again, meditating again and again, chewing again and again, that's when I began to hear the voice that came from the word. Now, if I say negative example, you'll understand. When you keep on, what is depression? In depression, people say, right? I hear voices. From where do you think the voice came? Because you kept on meditating, thinking, one thought multiplied into multiple thoughts and again and again and again and pondering and pondering, pondering. At one point of time, you begin to hear the voice. You're good for nothing. You're stupid. You go and die. Why are you living? Does that voice come? Yes. Ah, that we understand. Now, how, does that, how did that voice come? Because you were chewing, meditating on the problem. When you keep pondering, keep meditating, keep chewing the problem, that's when you begin to hear the voice that comes from that, what you are meditating. That's the voice of the enemy. That's why it's not about studying too many things. I did not, I went for a retreat and that retreat, what happened 15 years ago, I remember today. You are going for every month retreat. Do you remember four months ago what you learned in the retreat? That's why it's not about how much you are hearing. It's, it's not about how much you are eating. It's all about how much you are digesting. If you are eating from morning till night, no time to digestion. What will happen? Everything will come out. I took that one part, that one scripture and I went again and again and again and again. I kept on chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing. And chewing. Until I begin to hear the voice and that voice gave me confidence to step out. That voice pushed me. And I went. Honestly, I never laid hand on anybody. I, I am not a preacher's daughter. In fact, if I would tell about my dad, he was not now, before. His colleague saw me and said, you are so and so daughter. I said, yes, your father hates anybody carrying Bible. He would say, preachers are the biggest criminals. Are you really his daughter? 
I'm not a preacher's daughter, if you think like that. My father would say, those who are criminals would show outside they're criminals. But those who are preachers, they are the biggest criminals. Because, because of the wrong example. But that wrong example is not going to show us who Christ is, correct? Yes or no? Yes. Praise God. But today, he's, the same father, he tells me, you're doing the best job in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I have not brought up in an uh, environment of faith or speaking to the problem or healing the sick. No. When I walked inside on that day, I did not have any background. Sometimes my father used to explain to me Big Bang Theory, evolution, we came from monkey, all those things. He was a logical man, a self-righteous man. Be good, do good. Praise God. Praise the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, I, and if you think that I have a background like that, no. But then when I walked into that room, I said, Lord, I don't know. But your, I heard your voice and your word says, when the believer lay hand on the sick, the sick shall recover. And this girl is not even a Christian girl. And I go and lay hand on her. And I knew another scripture. I knew only one or two scriptures. I, I, Galatians 3.13. And I did not know what to do. So I told her, can you confess Galatians 3.13? And I made her repeat me. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. By becoming a curse in my place. Within a few seconds, I saw her sweating. And she just got up from the bed. I didn't even tell her, get up. And she started to walk and she said, I'm free now. And at least four or five of them were in that room. And all of them saw and they were astonished. Myself was astonished. And they said, what is that? And I said, we all, you all want experience? They said, yes. And we all started to speak Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. In the beginning days, anybody I go, anywhere I go, I give that scripture and I would lay hand. And I would see eye problem, ear problem, leg problem, they would get healed. Because that is the one scripture I knew. And all of them in that room were hit by the power of God and they were on the floor. In fact, one girl who came from the next room saw and she went and complained to the warden and then started all the problems. I couldn't even go to that hostel. It, you know, we have multiple hostels for, for a few, few months. I couldn't even go that side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was my first experience. Did I receive the seed? Yes. Did everyone receive the seed? Yes. But did everybody see the result? Now, I can stop there and I would have said it's okay and I would have continue, continued my life just like how a gardener, he cannot say one last or whole year I took care of the garden, this year I will take holiday. Can he? No matter how many years you took care, when you take holiday, the garden will go back to the same position. In the same way, no matter how many years I've been guarding this heart, the moment I stop guarding this heart, again this heart will go back into the same position. That's why there is no holiday. Planting the seed, hearing the word, seeing and speaking is the first step. But consistency is the key for breakthrough. That seed has to Remain in my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's what you wrote. God's word is great to power. And that word is conceived in my heart. It is conceived in my heart. Now when I open my mouth and say, when the believer lay hand on the sick, the sick shall recover. Do you think my word comes empty? No, because I know what I'm speaking, because I've been pondering on what I heard, I've been imagining on what I heard, I've been, I've been studying on what I've been heard, I've been practicing on what I've been heard, and that, that has become a part of my life. Did you get that? That's why now when I open my mouth and preach, it's not just words, it is faith-filled words. That's why when Jesus said, receive sight, it's not just words. He knew what he said. And he knew that every word has power. That's why every word comes out of his mouth came with confidence. 
Can we also come to that place? Yes. But what is the key? Consistency is the key. That's why if you, when you, you took that scripture, right? When you continue, did you take that scripture? The first time, first verse? No. If you continue in my word. If you continue in my word. Wait, wait, wait. You come in between and my flow gets, I'll give you last chance. If you continue in the word. Yeah, in my word. You shall know the truth. Now. Why is he saying continue? <laughs> because, okay, give me something. Okay. Example, okay, I'm using your kagi. Okay, now, this is a seed. The seed is not so big. Yeah, some seeds are big. Uh, okay, mango seed. If I break a mango seed, can I see inside mangoes? No. Can I see branches? No. Can I see leaves? No. Can I see fruit? No. But is it there inside? Yes. Just because I can't see, even if I break it and smash it. Why I'm saying this example? Because I tried when I was small. <laughs> because I'm curious. I thought tiny, tiny something will be tiny, tiny leaves, tiny, tiny branch. Nothing was there. Correct? But if that seed remains in the soil, soil then what is inside begin to sprout. Correct? The seed is unlocked. Correct? In the same way, the word of God is the truth. Truth has a hidden mystery, a hidden secret. The secret is inside. It is hidden. It's a mystery. No human mind can understand with his own ability. That secret has to be unlocked. When that secret is unlocked, that secret that is unlocked is what is going to bring freedom. Is going to bring result. That's why Jesus said, when you continue in my word, the truth is the word, the, the secret is in the word, the answer is in the word, the solution is in the word, just like how the seed has to remain in the soil, in the same way, when we continue in the word, the word remains in my heart. Only then, the truth in that word which cannot be seen, the mystery in the word that cannot be seen, the freedom in the word that cannot be seen is unlocked. That's why Jesus said, when you continue in my word, then you will come to know the truth which is hidden. The unlocking will not happen without the seed consistently remaining in the soil. Did you get that? The truth is hidden. So many mangoes and mango trees are hidden in the mango seed. Correct? But it has to be unlocked and the farmer has to learn to unlock. The farmer does not know how mango is created. Does he know? How leaves are created. Does he know? No. But the farmer knows the system of how a seed works, he has to learn to unlock. What if the farmer keeps the seed in the altar and kisses every day? Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. If you keep the Bible close to you, under your bed, kiss every day, nothing will happen. The seed has the power, but the, the seed will never produce until and unless the seed is, remains in the soil. In the same way, only when we continue in the word, that's when the hidden secret, the mystery, the truth is revealed and that truth is what brings freedom. That's why Jesus said, if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth and that truth sets you free. Did you get that? Now we are speaking the word, thinking when I speak the word, the word has the power to change, but actually that word has to be conceived in the heart first. It has to remain in my heart. The key for Abraham is when he, took, he, when he received the promise, he considered not his own body, but he considered the promise. Hallelujah. You know, one of the reasons why I, I began to see result, when I was in um, school, we used to have group study. Yes, the teacher would tell us to study and then each one should ask, correct? I would see my neighbors would study very fast by heart and they would start 
my heart day for me i would get stuck with the first word now i need dictionary to uh, first of all understand the meaning and then i have to imagine but by the time i try to understand one para the syllabus is poor now because of that attitude of mine i failed in school because school couldn't go in my speed but even that's whatever i learned if you ask me even now i remember whatever i i even though i, I was getting one digit and zero and i was very bad there are things which i learned that little i till now i can tell you but the same method 100% giving me result in the word of god i take one scripture i take one teaching and i go because i did not see abraham having thousands of promises he held on one promise yes or no yes god gave him many promises but if you see in the in the bible it speaks about you receive one seed and then you allow that seed then the seed has the ability to multiply then the multiplication takes place when i begin to take the example mark 16 17 what i said when i took that one day and night i'm thinking i'm meditating i'm confessing and i'm praying in tongues and i have a helper i was about to come there i forgot to share about that helper on that day i i said brother johnson was not there but thank god i have the holy spirit and the bible says when i do not know how to pray and what to pray there is this holy spirit who's there to help me in my weakness who's there to help me in my weakness spirit yes now if you see the disciples there are many things that jesus taught them but did they understand everything <laughs> No. no many things they did not understand but what did jesus say when the helper comes he will teach you Everything. all things correct now the same disciples who were filled with fear they did see result but they many but when they saw the problem they ran away when they saw jesus crucified they ran away but the same peter who rejected who denied christ three times when the holy spirit came when he received the baptism of the holy fire and when he began to pray in tongues he came out boldly and he started to speak the same peter who was so astonished seeing how did jesus speak to the fig tree now he himself peter and john are speaking to the crippled man and saying rise up and walk in the name of jesus christ of nazareth as i know did peter say gold or silver i don't have but what i have i give you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk now this was the same peter who was so astonished when jesus spoke to the fig tree but now the same peter is speaking to the crippled man and telling rise up and walk we can start like peter in doubt and end up in in the spirit as i know but what is the key the key was now the same peter who was struggling he has a helper and that helper is the holy spirit and that helper is in you and with you and the bible says that holy spirit jesus himself said when he comes he will remind you everything that i taught you my job is to learn holy spirit job is to remind now when i came in studio i thought i don't remember this incident what happened 15 years ago but who reminded me holy spirit reminded me because he is my helper but if i have to allow he cannot just help anybody i have to allow him to help me and how how can i allow him to help me because the bible says he himself is going to intercede through us for us when we do not know what to pray how to pray only when i open my mouth by faith and i begin to pray in tongues i am allowing him to pray to help me because just like how i said the word is a mystery it's a secret that his that mystery is hidden in the seed in the same way the mystery is hidden in the word when i begin to pray in tongues the bible says i'm speaking the mystery of god i'm speaking the hidden mystery the hidden secrets i don't know how the word works but the holy spirit knows how it works i don't know exactly i heard now when i went for that 
preaching on that day when i saw the crooked lips becoming straight when i saw the deaf ears opening did he teach me when you go uh, when you see a sick girl you go into the room you lay hand on the girl and you say galatians 3:13 did the preacher teach me that no who taught me but but before i learned from the holy spirit did i receive the seed yes now was i pondering on it was i studying that scripture was i imagining that scripture was i uh, researching that scripture was i speaking the scripture and was i also praying in tongues yes and now i don't know what to do to that girl because i have no experience i have not seen i have not uh, prayed over anybody but now do i have a helper with me yes and now when i began to pray in tongues as i i did not know what to do the lord did not show me when you enter the room she will be like this you have to do no 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 he only told me go i went i after i went he reminded me that scripture why that scripture because what is in my heart is what he reminds me if i don't study any scripture what he will say file not found my job is to study his job is to remind me did i open and speak the scripture yes did i lay hand yes now did i see the manifestation yes, yes. but who was my helper who is my helper now what what made the difference peter heard peter was having the best of the best teacher with him but when did he really get the understanding after the baptism of the holy spirit all that what he received and all that he what he learned the revelation came when he began to pray in tongues hallelujah hallelujah but do we allow the holy spirit to help us no. better do it better do it yeah <laughs> hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus now when you open your mouth now when abraham was calling when he opened his mouth and when he called himself abraham it was not just words those are faith filled words he saw himself as a father of many nations i'll give you one more example okay when i went to a place there was one sister who used to organize my program and she seen for the first time people getting healed after 6 months uh she told me i've been ministering to some of the sick people and i've been giving them the white book maybe 10% i saw result 90% i did not see result and in that nine the first day session is all those people whom she is ministering who has not whom she did not see result she had a session only for them and she said i want to know why when you come and preach people get healed when i am ministering i am not seeing the result and she asked me i want to know because now the thoughts must be coming okay that preacher is anointed correct yes or no that preacher has some special gift so i picked up one person who had very very severe pain and i asked him will jesus heal you he was trained to answer no i am already healed now just because you answer i am healed doesn't mean you believe what you say correct because he has been given an answer when you when they ask you are healed you should say i am healed that's why when people give wrong answer everybody helps no say i am healed say i am healed it's not saying i am healed now he said i am healed yeah that's what he said but the pain was still there now what she did is she gave the white book and she told him to keep confessing that i am the body of christ every day plus 1 peter 2:25 i'm healed by the wounds of jesus and he is sincerely doing maybe he he, he saw some changes it's not that it did not work at all he did see some changes i started to preach i did not go to 1 peter i went to the book of isaiah and i went to the book of psalms 22 Uh, and i started to explain to him first of all i started to explain about sin and how because of sin 
death came into this world and how the Messiah has to come. And I started to explain to him what happened on the cross. cross. And, and, I, and I started to tell him that this he did because he loves you. And I, as I began to describe to him who Jesus is and what happened on the cross, his focus completely shifted. Uh, you know, uh, the, how to say, the atmosphere there was very, very different. Because I could see him completely engrossed and his eyes was red and tears in his eyes and he began to imagine and picture. He began to see Jesus on the cross. His focus completely came out of his body to Jesus on the cross. And now I asked him, will Jesus heal you? He said, no, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed. And when he said those words, I tell you, those words did not come like a parrot. Those words did not come like a parrot. He, earlier, he was saying the same words hundred times. But this time, he only spoke once. He opened his mouth and said, with tears in his eyes, no, by his wounds, I'm healed. And I asked, check your symptom. He said, there is no symptom. It's all gone. I didn't even know when it left me. The same person who's been repeating thousand times because he didn't even know what Jesus did on the cross. The word didn't, didn't even conceive in his heart. It was not even produced in his heart. He was just saying because he thought if I keep saying then God is pleased with me and he will heal me. But when he really understood what happened on the cross, Jesus became a curse for me. He, he took my shame. He took my sin. He took my pain. He took my sickness. And what Jesus went through on the cross... He didn't even know when he opened his mouth and spoke, it was not just words. It came as faith filled <coughs> words. And every word came out of his mouth came with faith. Because he knew what he spoke. Now what gave him the imagination? The word that he heard gave him that imagination. And only once he spoke and he saw the healing and I looked at her and I, I told her, did I pray over him? Did I rebuke that sickness? There are times I do that. But this time, did I do that? No. I only helped him to shift his focus from what he could see to the unseen. Because faith is to see the unseen. And what gives me the ability to see the unseen? The word of God gives me the ability to see the unseen. If you really take the White book, I would, I would suggest instead of you telling everything as a parrot, take one scripture. I still remember in that um, uh, white book, there is one scripture that says, Thank you, Jesus, in the Thanksgiving. There's so many Thanksgiving in that. It says one line. Thank you, Jesus, that today you have given me favor with you, with men, and with all those who are authority over me. You know, when I took that white book and I began to study it, that's how, that is my attitude. I get stuck in one. When I see people, they go and on and on and on, but I cannot go on and on and on. That's my character. I get stuck in one place and I get stuck there. Now, why I got stuck in that scripture? You know why? Because when I, went, when I got that word of God in the beginning, I just entered my college. I had such fear to go to my classroom. Because now I have word. And by God's grace, I even got seat in a college. I'm also, you know, enrolled and I'm doing uh, uh, BSc, psychology. And I, I have so much fear to go to my classroom. Because all my life, I was always punished. My, you know, if you see my mark sheet was zeros and one digit. My, my uh, answer paper would be all empty. Now I got seat in the college. I don't know how to go to class and sit. I don't know to read and write. If they ask me question, I don't know how to answer. If they ask me to read my textbook, I will not know to read. And I had so much fear to go. Because there is fear of punishment, there is fear of insult, there is fear of rejection. The, my teachers, my, my friends, my classmates may reject me, my teachers might reject me. How? And you know, I, when I got my admission, I started studying every word here and there because I don't know any spelling. 
And that fear of every day getting up and going to class would be challenging. And that scripture spoke to me. Thank you, Jesus, that today you have given me favor with you, with men, and with all those who authority, right? I changed it like all my teachers, all my professors, and all those who are authority over me. And I wrote it big on my, in a paper, and I stuck in the wall. And every day when that fear would come, I would open my mouth and say, thank you, Jesus, that today you have given, given me favor with you, with men, with all my teachers, with all my professors, and with all those who are authority over me. And as I began to speak, that word would encourage me. That word is not just a word. I t see, remember this. When you take the word and when you keep on pondering, you begin to hear the voice that comes from the word. And that voice that comes from the word is what gives you the confidence. <laughs> Maybe I did not read the whole Thanksgiving prayer, but that one which I kept saying, I begin to hear the voice from that word. And that voice gave me confidence. I, I begin to hear the voice that God's favor is upon me, just like how the Lord was with Joseph. And the, and the master saw that God was with Joseph because God's favor was upon Joseph. The same favor of God is upon me. And when I go into the classroom, I, I find favor from my teacher. I find favor from my friends and from all those who are authority over me. It's not a luck or it's not a fluke. It's God's favor in my life, which I begin to activate, which is already there. But I have to release that favor in my life by speaking it. But before I speak it, it has to be conceived in my heart. It both takes place simultaneously as I speak and imagine and ponder and meditate. The consumption takes place. And that's how I used to go. That's how I finished my degree and master's, both first class. I still remember when I went to my university, I was almost fourth rank in the university. Okay, so one of the retreat, I went for translation. So I missed some of the class. So before the semester exam, this teacher would come, this professor. Many a times, when she would teach, she would, we had smart class. She would put the pen drive and she would run some 50, 60 slides in no time. And she would run very fast. And I'm like, sometimes I feel like she's speaking Chinese. Because I would find very difficult to understand. But remember, I'm confessing that, thank you, Jesus, that today you have given me favor with you, with men, with all those who are in authority over me. Plus, I'm also confessing the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, Isaiah 11 to, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of fear of the Lord is upon me. I'm speaking not just like a parrot. I'm believing it and speaking. Every time the teacher would see my face blank, they used to call me Maria. My name is Maria Jocelyn, so they call me Maria. Every time they see the teacher would see my face blank that I can't understand, she'll ask me a question. God is my witness. God is my witness. Many times when she would ask question, I had no clue what she asked. But I would open my mouth and say something and that would be the right answer. I really, really don't know. I, it's not that I am neglecting. I am giving my full attention to her to listen, to understand. But the moment she sees my face blank, she would ask me. And something would come out of my mouth and she would say, very good. And I'm like, what did I say? <laughs> because God's favor was upon me. God's favor is upon me. And you know, I, I remember I would only take leave when I had to translate. I used to be Papa's translation. That's how my ministry began. So uh, one of the subject, I, I was not there. So... Uh, she gave me a chance, you know, she go She gives everybody a chance before the semester exam. They can ask, you can write and give you all your doubts. And she'll come to that session, she will read the doubts and she will explain. With the name of the person, okay? When my name came, she read the question and she read my name. And she looked at me and she said, a brilliant student like Maria, if you read this five times, you will know the answer. I will not explain. And she walks out. I looked at her and I'm like, brilliant student? <laughs> I was being always zero. And I was wondering what made her to think I'm brilliant. 
Yes, I am. Because I have the mind of Christ. But in the physical, in the natural, I did not see that. But I did see the favor of God in my life. I did see the wisdom of God. I did see, but did it happen in one day? Or see, if I would have spent days and years and months sitting and studying about about dyslexia or learning disability, I would have been sensitive to that and I would have said, I have this problem, I can't read and write. But I spent day and night studying on the word which says I have God's wisdom. The spirit of truth is abiding in me and teaching me all things and guiding me into all truth. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have the mind of Christ and the knowledge of God is found within me. Now what am I doing? I'm taking the word of God and I'm meditating it day and night and my heart is becoming sensitive. Now when I open my mouth and speak, I'm not just speaking empty words. Because now abundant of my heart is what my mouth speaks. Is it about how many or it is how depth? You can hear the whole sermon and you can go and it may not result anything. But you can go back and then you can spend time in that few scriptures what you learned from morning. Only two or three scriptures and you can go deep and deep and deep. It works. Thank God that method works. That method failed me in school. But that method works in God's kingdom. Because I see people you know by heart the scriptures cover to cover and they quote scriptures. But I don't see any power demonst being demonstrated. I, don't, I see them quoting scriptures but I don't see anything happening in their life. I don't see any souls getting touched through them. I don't see they going and reaching out to people. What is the use of you by hearting hundred scriptures when not one scripture brings result? It's better you stick to some and you see result of that some. And then from there you grow. Hallelujah. Remember that garden example? A beautiful garden. When you see, you, you, you may not see the gardener, but you can see what the gardener has planted. You can see a garden and you can see whether the gardener is lazy or active. You don't need to see the gardener. You can see the garden and tell. In the same way, if I see somebody's life, I don't need to see what the person did in, in, in home or in his past. The fruit in his life will tell what the, what the person has been doing. If I see fear, anxiety, worry, depression, that means that place is left without any attention. Everything that person has been seeing and hearing has been controlling that person's life. You cannot blame God. I have been praying. I have been doing that. I have been doing this. But my life is miserable. No way. Today what your life is. The seeds that you have been, been planting in the past. If you want to change your future. There is good news. No matter how the land looks barren. And full of bushes and thorns. It can be turned into a beautiful garden. If you start, if you start spending time. Investing time. In, 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 in uh, removing the weeds and planting the good seed. And the good news is, when you plant the good seed, the seed has the potential to change the condition of the heart. When you allow the word to remain in your heart, that word that you allow to remain in your heart is what is going to change the condition of the soil. The word has the potential to change the condition of the heart. But for that, the word has to be consistently heard, consistently spoken, consistently meditated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Today, I have a choice. You know what is the choice? If I'm going to consistently go into the Bible and research how Jesus raised the dead, how Jesus opened the blind eyes, how he opened the deaf ears, how he walked in compassion, how he walked in love, how the disciples, when Peter walked his shadow, healed the uh, sick, how they, they walked in the supernatural, when they prayed, the earth shook, when Paul and Silas were praising, the, the, the prison doors were open, the earth shook. If I go and constantly you know, he said, right, supernatural can be taught, can be learned and can be 
Practice. When I constantly learn, when I constantly see, when I constantly hear, when I constantly speak, my heart becomes sensitive to that. Where supernatural becomes real in my life. That's what I do every day. I every day go and research the history and the history is in the Bible. Go to the history and I see how people, men of God and women of God walked in the glory of God. I spend time, I invest time every day studying about God's glory. What is God's glory? The invisible power of God manifest that can be seen with the natural eyes. His glory. What do I do? I go and I study every day about the glory of God, about the power of God, about the healing of God, about the, of the miracles of God, about the love of God, the forgiveness of God, the compassion of God. And every day I research, I love, that's my passion. I love to do that. I discuss people with people who are with me. I, I see to that people who are with me don't discuss anything else. I, I speak on that, I study on that, I research on that, I imagine that. I don't watch news, I don't watch TV. I don't go and read newspaper. If you think I'm lacking something, that's your problem. I don't lack anything. Because people think because I'm not reading newspaper, I'm not... Okay. My dad used to say that, okay, I'm attacking my dad. That is past example, okay, he's not like that now. Praise God. He, I told you, he supports me like any other. Uh, I don't think any other father would support like how my father supports. That's why I could go everywhere to preach. Even if there is a wedding or anything in my family, my dad would to tell me, I, I don't want you to cancel your preaching and come for these weddings. We will go. If people and the place I come from, they question. You're, she's not married, what she's doing, where she's working, how much she's earning, all these questions. And my father would say, my one daughter is equal to 10 men. And she's living a better life of uh, anybody else I know. He would give, and he would tell me, you don't need to answer all these questions, we will answer these questions. You don't need to come. You do what God has called you to do. Praise God. So whatever I'm saying is past, okay? Not now. Praise God. Okay. So, my father used to, uh, so when I got job, uh, when I got my offer letter, my dad came to me, he, very good dad, very concerned about me, who loves me. He is thinking this girl doesn't know anything other than the word of God. Because she took all zero, zero, zero. She failed. She doesn't know Mac, she doesn't know English, she doesn't know uh, language. And now she got an offer letter. And she is only studying the word of God day and night. So what she will do when she go to work? You need some general knowledge. My dad was very, very concerned. He came to me and he said, I don't know how you finished your degree and you finished your master's. Maybe you just wrote something, you filled the paper and they gave you marks. Because he couldn't believe that. I really passed in all my subjects and that went first class. So he said, I don't know how you got because he never saw me studying. Whenever I come for semester holiday, he only see the Bible. He see my notebook. He see me all the time with my earphones, with my MP3 player. He never saw my textbook, nor he saw my rank card, nor he saw my papers. He said, I don't know how you pass. But work is not like that. You can scribble something and they give you a mark. You should actually have some knowledge. You should watch TV. You should read newspaper. You should know current what is happening. You should have some world knowledge. And he said, I'm, I'm telling you because I don't want you to go into a job and get into a shock. It is a genuine concern. Correct? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Now I got a job. And he must be thinking I will, I will quit the job because he was expecting me to quit my studies also. So he was expecting me to quit my job also. One month went, two months went, three months went, four, six months. After one year, he's seeing the director of the company with his wife would come to my house and tell my parents, your daughter is a blessing to our company. And my father looked at him, what? <laughs> I resigned my job in 2016. I, I worked four years. 
After I resigned the job, the company car would surely come to my house, pick me, drop me in the airport, and every time I come home, the company car would come. Even now, something or the other would come, they would help us in so many ways. And my father told my sister, she left the job, why they're not leaving her? You know why I'm saying that? If you have knowledge of the word, the creator himself is abiding in you and teaching you all things. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He knows science, he knows Max better than anybody. And he knows world news better than anybody. And he, he wants to guide me and teach me. I don't need to know everything. I only want to know what I have to know. And he teaches me what I have to know. It doesn't mean I don't study anything. There are other things also. There is technology and other things. But anything that I study, I study because God put it in my heart to study it. Anything I do is because of the advancement of God's kingdom. If you are getting deceived, I have to know all things in the world. And if you're opening door for TV and newspaper and social media, that is what you have opened door for the weeds and the bushes and the thorns and the thistles, not even realizing those thorns and bushes, they grow faster and they bring faster result. Destruction comes faster. But in, when it comes to good fruit and good vegetable, there is a lot of labor and time. And what is that labor? The labor is not to bring the result. The labor is to protect the seed. The seed will bring the result. That labor is to turn my focus from the world to the word. That labor is not allowing any other information that is contradicting to the word of God. That labor is having a consistent check on what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing and what I'm speaking should be aligned to the word and not contradicting to the word. Guarding these eyes and ears and mouth is that labor. Keeping a check on what information I'm getting. With whom am I speaking? Is this person whom I am fellowshipping helping me to build my faith? Or is that person op I'm a opening door for lust and fear and worry and anxiety and unbelief? Because the word of God first has to be conceived in my heart. For that consumption needs time. Because the word of God has to remain in the heart. And then that has to be formed in my mouth, in my lips. And that has to be released. Now when you release, it's not just empty word, it's faith-filled word that brings result. Just like how when Jesus spoke. We also, when we every day guard this heart, and every day be cautious of what we see and what we hear and what we speak. That's when our heart becomes sensitive. Just like how I said faith is the ability to see the unseen. That's when you begin to see, not with your own ability, but faith is the sense. It's the ability to see the unseen. You begin to see, you begin to hear the voice of God. You begin to speak the word that brings result. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, shall we all stand? Now all that you learned is the time for you to exercise, okay? Remember that example of the man who that sister was ministering. He was continuously saying, I am healed by the wounds of Jesus. But he did not see the result. But the same man, when I begin to explain to him what happened on the cross, his focus shifted from the problem from the seen to the unseen. I want you to do the same. Close your eyes. Maybe you're going through a situation. Maybe you're going through a problem. Maybe you're going through a sickness. But now shift your focus from you to him and see Jesus on the cross. See Jesus on the cross. He died for you in your place. 
the bible says jesus was rejected by the father the father rejected him the sin of the whole world was put on jesus the sin of the entire human race was put on jesus jesus was made sin he never committed sin but he was made sin as if he was he as if he was a criminal as if he was a murderer as if he raped as if he robbed he was made sin the bible says he carried all our sickness he carried the sickness of the entire world on himself the book of isaiah says that jesus was beyond human appearance nobody can even make out that he was human you know why because the entire sickness of the world he took upon him nobody can take a movie out of it nobody can imagine it you need a revelation from the holy spirit to know what happened on the cross every tumor every lump every skin disease every sickness every sickness he sucked into his body <clears throat> that he was beyond human appearance nobody can even even see him and say he is a human being and the bible says every bone in his body came out of joint and his body was poured out like water water has no shape when water is poured in a container it takes the shape of the container jesus body was without any shape it was poured out like water a human structure is intact because the bones are in its place but the bible says every bone came out of its place and there was no structure in his body his body was poured out like water his heart was melted like wax his organs melted like wax every cell in his body was damaged and jesus that jesus from the cross is seeing you and telling you my daughter my son if you were the only person i would have still chose to die for you because i love you no matter what you're going through he took your poverty he took your lack he took your sickness he took your curse he took your bondage he took your depression he was not just going through physical sickness he took every mental sickness on himself he took every oppression on himself he went through every demonic affliction he was tormented not because he committed sin but he became a substitute for you and me and as you are seeing jesus believe he has set you free completely and right now as god's healing power flowing into your body as you're seeing jesus the blood of jesus is cleansing you from every sin no matter what had happened in the past no matter what is that sin right now the blood of jesus is cleansing you see the blood of jesus cleansing you see the blood of jesus washing you you are washed by the blood of jesus say that i'm washed by the blood of jesus i'm washed by the blood of jesus i'm cleansed by the blood of jesus i'm made clean in the name of jesus i'm completely set free i'm completely set free i'm set free from every oppression 
I'm set free from every depression. I'm set free from every fear. Come on, say that I'm set free from every fear. In the name of Jesus, I'm set free from every fear. Come on, open your mouth and say I'm set free from every fear. Right now, there is freedom here. There is freedom here. In the name of Jesus, receive your freedom. In the name of Jesus, receive your freedom. You are set free from every fear now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to every spirit of fear, every spirit of torment, every spirit of oppression. Come out, out now. Leave this person now. Come out, come out. Every fear, every fear, come out. Leave now. Be free now in the name of Jesus. Receive your freedom now. You are completely set free. You are completely set free. Every yoke of the enemy is, is removed now. Every burden is removed now. You are set free. Come on, open your mouth. I'm set free completely in the name of Jesus. I'm set free completely in the name of Jesus. I'm healed by the wounds of Jesus. Come on, declare your faith. Release that word. Your, word, your words have power. God's word is created to power. That word that is conceived in your heart and that is formed in your lips and that is released through your mouth. Come on, open your mouth and say, I'm healed by the wounds of Jesus. I'm completely healed by the wounds of Jesus. I'm completely set free. I'm redeemed from every curse. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law by becoming a curse in my place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on, as you're opening your mouth and declaring there is freedom in this house. There is freedom in this house. There is healing taking place right now. That's God's healing power flowing into you right now. That's God's healing power flowing into you right now. That's God's healing power. Come on, receive. That's God's fire. That's God's fire flowing into you. Receive, receive, receive. Come on, receive. Receive. There is healing happening right now. Your lungs are healed now. Your lungs are healed now. Your heart Many of you, your heart is healed. Life of Jesus is flowing into your heart. There is no more blocks in your heart. There is no more blocks in your heart. Right now, there is healing taking place. There is healing taking place in your kidneys. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the stones in the kidneys. In any part of your body, I command the stones be uprooted and be cast into the sea right now. Life of Jesus, come on. See the cross and start praising. Start praising. It's God's creative power. That's God's create the power recreating every organ in your body your kidneys are healed your kidneys are functioning perfectly in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus that cancer is destroyed from the root in the name of Jesus I speak to that spirit of cancer come out out now come out you spirit of cancer out in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit I command every cell be healed life of Jesus is flowing into every cell right now Life of Jesus is flowing into every cell right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the spirit of arthritis. I speak to you, your spirit of arthritis. Come out. Out. Now from the root in the name of Jesus. Life of Jesus is flowing into every joints in your body. Life of Jesus flowing into every bones in your body, into every joints in your body. Your new cartilages receive new cartilages. Your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, your nerves are loose now. Loose now. Life of Jesus is flowing into every joints in your body right now. Every cell, every tissue in your body is healed right now. Your digestive system is healed now. Your digestive system is healed now. Life of Jesus is flowing into your into your digestive system, into your intestine right now. Life of Jesus is flowing into your intestine. Life of Jesus is flowing into your intestine. You are healed of ulcers. You are healed of ulcers. Your digestive system is completely healed. You are healed of constipation. You are completely healed. Your bowel movements are completely restored. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, receive. Come on, receive. Open your mouth. Imagine. See the power flowing. Come on, use your imagination. See the life of Jesus flowing into you. And there is God's creative power recreating every 
every cell in your body right now. Recreating every cell right now. Life of Jesus is flowing into every organ, into your brain. Into your brain. Every tissue in your brain is healed. Blood circulation and oxygen in your brain is perfect. It's perfect right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, start praising him. Start thanking him. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, there is freedom in this house. You are set free. You are set free. You are set free. You are completely set free. You are healed by the wounds of Jesus. You are healed by the wounds of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Don't open your eyes. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. That's God's healing power. You're healed of every rejection, every hurt. That's God's love. That's God's love. He's speaking to you. He's embracing you. He's healing you. He's operating you. The presence of God is here. In the presence of God, every mountain melts like wax. Every burden is removed now. You are set free. That's God's fire on you. That's God's fire on you. Burning every corruption. That's God's power. Let him take over. Don't be conscious. That's God's power. Don't get distracted. Let him do what he's doing. Let him do what he's doing. God's power. Yes, receive, 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 receive. That's God's fire on you. 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 Receive. Come on, receive. Come on, receive. Receive. Every weed, every demonic stronghold, every corruption is destroyed now. You're set free now. Your life will never be the same again. That's God's power. That's God's power. Don't get distracted. Let him do what he's doing.
Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. He's talking to you and he's telling my son, my daughter, I love you. I love you. I care for you. You are never alone. I'm always with you. I'm always in you. I never leave you alone. I'm your father. I'm your mother. I'm your provider. I'm your protector. I'm your counselor. I'm your teacher. I'm your doctor. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Move your leg, move your hand, Ben. Come on, see. Ben, move your legs. Now tell me how many of you experience physical healing. Raise your hands. Raise your hand. Wave your hands. Praise God. How many of you experience the power of God? Raise your hand. Yes. How many of you experience that fear, that that anxiety has left you? Raise your hand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can you can you tell what happened, sister? I was very anxious and worried about something. You were anxious and worried. Power that left you. You feel light. Praise God. Can you tell what happened? You had fear. Not fear, but I was worried. But I was confessing that God has not given me a spirit. Out of fear. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Thank you, Jesus. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank you. We love you. But all that we learned, help us that we don't just hear it and neglect it. But today the consumption has taken place. Like a good farmer, help us, Lord, that every day we allow this word to remain in our heart consistently. Water it, manure it. So that we like a gardener, like a farmer, learn to unlock the seed and our life become a beautiful garden to be a blessing to the nations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank